Hello there, spooky friends. So today we are going to talk about um, Zach Bagans and Ghost Adventures. Um, I am a fan of Ghost Adventures. I have been since the very first episode, but we'll go more into detail about that later on in the video. <clears throat> Pardon me. First up, I would like to talk about a documentary that Zach and his team did uh, back in 2018 called Demon House. Rotten Tomatoes gave this 54%. Okay, so Demon House is a house that is located in Gary, Indiana. And it had come across the news um, that this house um, supposedly was so demonic and full of demons that it had possessed the people living there. And at the time, the people living there, they were only renting the house. Well, once this story hit the news, um, it took quite a turn. There were allegations in um, of child uh, services being called to the house. When they when the people went to um, investigate, however, they didn't really find any evidence of anything demonic going on. The way I understand it is they had called the people into uh, the offices to discuss some things with them, uh, with their social worker. While they were in the offices, the child started to climb up the walls. Like, like humans it shouldn't be able to do like just started climbing up the walls um and showed signs of aggression and some other things like that the people were extremely nervous and antsy and on edge and they just didn't seem right um since then that social worker immediately after that case she completely went out of that business altogether because it scared her so bad that she no longer could be involved with not just that family, but with that service as well, because it just, it was like a trigger for her to have to go into work. She just couldn't handle it. She quit her job and moved on to something else. Police were being called constantly to that house for unexplainable reasons i mean just weird stuff was happening in this house that could not be explained even for the police the police couldn't even explain it um so the family moved out and they refused to be on camera they wanted nothing to do they didn't want the publicity um but they did talk to the news about it however a lot of people were speculating that they were doing it just so they wouldn't have to pay rent on on the house because they had owed rent but that i don't feel that that was the case whatsoever um i really legit feel that this house did have something going on with it but not to the extreme that zach makes it out in the documentary so let's fast forward a little bit the family moves completely out of that house they want nothing to do with it um, they moved to Indianapolis, okay? They're happy. Things are great. The house, however, goes up for sale. Zach finds out about this unusual situation. And he buys the house over the phone, sight unseen. Now, he had never been there before. He didn't know if it really was legit haunted or what have you. But he had heard enough information to make the decision on his own that he wanted this house he was going to get this house so he bought the house and he decides him and his crew are going to come in and they're going to film they're going to document anything that happens inside the house well so they go in and the, then the documentary gets extremely slow nothing happens for a while he interviews some people this and that and the other a normal ghost adventures episode pretty much and then things start to take a turn some some things start happening or what have you 
But what I find interesting is that every time something happens, the camera is never pointed in the direction that the things are happening. Um, kind of just like, just like the Ghost Adventures episodes half the time, or any of the paranormal shows for that matter. Um, the ending really makes me mad. Okay. So the ending is Zach is alone in the house by himself. He has all of the windows and doors boarded up. It's just him and the cameras inside the house, okay? And he's got the cameras on, of course, and everything. And he's sitting in a bedroom on a bed. And he's <clears throat> he's just sitting there. And suddenly, he's like freaking out and everything. And all chaos cuts loose and everything. And he claims he sees a demon coming towards him uh into the room he sees this demon and he makes eye contact with this demon now mind you while zach is all freaking out and everything nothing else is happening in the house there's no movement there's no sound there is nothing but the sound of zach freaking out and everything okay you don't even see the demon you don't see anything um now you can't tell me with all the cameras that are in this house that it picked up absolutely nothing wouldn't a demon make a sound make things move wouldn't all chaos start to happen other than zach freaking out i mean come on that really made me mad because obviously he's trying he's just acting is all he's doing there is nothing there and I think he was disappointed because they, you know, had filmed this documentary with the hopes that things were going to happen and nothing happened. Nothing. It's all acted. Everything. Um, there's even a part earlier in the movie where him and his friends go back to the motel that they're staying in. And one of the crew starts acting all possessed and everything. But his acting doesn't make any sense. Like, he, he just doesn't flow together whatsoever. It is horrible. Zach claims that he flew home to Las Vegas and while he was on that airplane, he developed an intense migraine and he, th it developed as soon as he saw the demon. Okay. And he had this intense migraine that wouldn't go away. So he went to his doctor once he landed in Las Vegas and it turns out that seeing the demon had messed up his eyesight. And so that's why he has to wear the glasses now, because he saw the demon and it messed with his eyes. Uh, no. I don't buy it for a second. Um, and it just really makes me mad. It makes actual paranormal investigators like myself and many others out there look like clowns. Um, and it just, yeah, I was more mad when I saw Demon House than anything and extremely disappointed because... Granted, most of the Ghost Adventure shows are cheesy as all get out. You can tell they're fake in half the time. But not every episode is like that. There are some episodes that legit you see things happen or you hear EVPs clear as day. Like, there are some episodes things happen. Anyway, so Zach had the Demon House tore down. But I should add a side note, before he had it tore down, he took some items that were actually left behind from the family to put into his haunted museum. Then he had the house torn down, but he still owns the land because he doesn't want anybody to build on that land. Um, I wouldn't even give this movie two stars. It's horrible. There's a disclaimer at the beginning that claims... Uh, that if you watch it, that uh, to be advised that bad paranormal things may happen to you or whatever. Uh, I've watched it twice now and nothing has ever happened. I think it, you know, it's just a gimmick. Um, you can find Demon House, I know, on Prime. It's probably on other streaming services as well. Um, yeah, I would give it maybe a one star. It's bad. It makes me mad. It should never have happened, in my opinion. It's very cheesy, and like I said, it just makes 
actual people that do this, that do paranormal investigations look like clowns. And it also makes us here in Indiana look stupid. Okay, moving on. So, let's talk about Ghost Adventures, which you can find every episode of Ghost Adventures on Discovery+. Plus. Um, I'm going to tell you my five favorite episodes. Um, Panic in Amarillo. This one, oh my gosh. Okay, so they had actually researched another area that they were going to be doing and instead decided to do this one because this lady had notified Travel Channel they were in a panic and they had a three-year-old little girl living there and there were uh, demons that were possessing the child, child and hurting her and this and that and the other. So they decide that they're going to switch and go do this house instead. The house is filthy from top to bottom. I mean, I wouldn't even let a stray dog or a wild animal live in this house. It was disgusting. Throughout the entire show, she's wearing pajamas and looks tacky as all complete white trash. Complete white trash. Well, to make a long story short, uh, nothing happens when they do investigation. Nothing. Um, so they have the priest come in and he does couple different blessings on the house but nothing happens um you know in the living room they have different size crosses and stuff hanging up on the walls if there was a demon in that house them crosses would be upside down or off the wall big time uh but anyway nothing happens well she keeps getting these scratches and then the little girl starts to get scratches but no one in the house is getting scratches so um Zach kind of wonders if she's doing it to herself to get attention. Um, so they show actual proof that she's doing it herself. And she's scratching the crap out of the little girl to make it look like the little girl's getting scratched. Um, to my knowledge, when I have read some current information on that episode, um... CPS was called, and that woman, that psycho, no longer has custody of the little girl. Um, and most of the family members that were um, filmed for the episode don't have anything to do with her anymore. Um, she obviously has some mental illness, um, and I hope that she finds help for that. Um, she obviously was just wanting attention and that just, I cannot stand when that happens. It infuriates me when people do that. Um, but I understand it's out there and people are going to do it. So whatever. Um, but that, that episode was so, um, eye opening. And interesting and it sheds light on the people that really do get in touch with paranormal investigators and they're like oh yeah my house is haunted when really it isn't and they're just trying to get attention that's all it is and it happens a lot a lot more than you think so that episode to me was just shedding light on that those kind of people are out there and that sort of thing happens um, another, my second favorite is Bobby Mackey's Music World. Actually, that's my number one favorite. Uh, it was the first episode I ever saw um, with Ghost Adventures. It is located in Wilder, Kentucky. I have been there. I have done uh, an investigation there. Um, I did have some things happen while I was there, but I'll save it for another episode. Um, but I saw that uh, show... And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go there. I have to go to Bobby Mackey's. It's not that far from my house. I have to see this. And, um, but it was like a few years down the road when I went after the video had come out. Well, um, there's also a show called A Haunting that came on Travel Channel around the same time. And they showed their take on Bobby Mackey's Music World and I'm like okay 
hands down, that's number one on my paranormal bucket list now, is to go and visit Bobby Mackey's. So that, but I love that episode um, of Ghost Adventures. Then there is the Doll Island episode. Oh my gosh. I think I laughed more at that episode than I was freaked out, only because I myself am terrified of dolls. So I know what Zach was feeling <laughs> when he arrived at this island that is nothing but dolls and the story behind it. Um, and so it was just, yeah, so the guys are, you know, they're filming and everything and trying to be serious, but at the same time, they're so... Um, what do I want to say, like skittish and jumpy and just kind of paranoid because it is the creepiest place ever. Oh my gosh. If you haven't seen that episode of Ghost Adventures, definitely you have to see it. Even if you hate Ghost Adventures, it's still a fun episode. Definitely check it out. Um, if you don't want to see the ghost adventure side of it and you just want to know more about doll island you can google it and see pictures of it and it is terrifying oh my gosh um then is gettysburg i love history and i love the shows that they did when they were in gettysburg i thought it was such awesome um footage that they caught and it, it's actually believable. It The Gettysburg, I really don't think they faked anything for that episode. Um, it's really, really good. I highly recommend that watching that episode of Gettysburg. And Vicksburg. They did Vicksburg too. And that episode was really, really good as well. And last but not least is the Birdcage Theater in Arizona. I really like all of the episodes that they have done um, in Nevada and in Arizona, um, but the Birdcage Theater is one of my favorites um, because they get so much evidence caught, and it's not evidence that can be manipulated or faked. It is real, true evidence in the Birdcage. Um, definitely give those episodes a watch. Um, if not, if you don't like Ghost Adventures, um, but you are curious to see like what evidence they pick up you're gonna love that episode there's evps there's anomalies i mean it is great if not anything even to just watch the history because they talk about the history of the place and to me that in itself it was interesting i even if they wouldn't have found anything in that episode just the birdcage theater history on its own was so interesting and i would love to visit that area someday i would love it i probably would never want to leave if i went down there and visited that area so next um i want to talk about ghost adventures versus um taps and the dead files the holzer files ghost nation i like all of those shows dead files to me gets on my nerves um i think that she is full of crap half the time the episodes it, they're very dry um and i just i'm not a huge fan of the dead files the holzer files oh i love the holzer files um if you don't know the history of um, Holzer, you need to look it up. He was the first true paranormal investigator. Um, but I don't want to go into that because that will be a whole nother episode and I could be here for hours and hours boring you to death about that. Um, but the automatic writing I think is very interesting, especially when you can find the facts to back it up. And they do. And I find that extremely interesting to me. That The automatic writing um, is very intriguing to me. I, I really like that. And I would like to, to um, know more about automatic writing and, and dig deeper into that. And maybe sometime I will do a video about it. Who knows? Um, and anyway, so moving on. So Ghost Nation, which is a, I'm going to say it's a spinoff from Taps. 
Um, Ghost Nation, I like just because it, I was a huge Taps fan when it came out. The Transatlantic Paranormal um, Society. When it first came out, um, I loved Jason Hawes and um, I can't think of his name. Oh my gosh. It's right there. Anyway, and his partner. Well, the whole team, actually. The original team with Tango and um, I just, I liked the whole, the whole team. I watched every episode. I still liked Ghost Adventures better than Taps, but it was still pretty good. Only because Taps was more dry. Um, they had some light humor, but not a lot. So it kind of made for a boring show, you know. Um, and Ghost Nation, however, I it is dry with just a little comedy. But I like the way that Ghost Nation does things. I like how they go in, they spend the night, but they show you the floor plans of the buildings that they're in, and they show you history and different things like that. I love the way Ghost Nation is set up now. Um, also, I find it taps, I found taps really interesting because um, they were just like two, they were plumbers working for Rotor Rooter. And then, you know, so they're just these two average guys. And then they go out and start, they have their own documentary TV show all of a sudden. And that was very fascinating to me. And I think that's why I really enjoyed it taps because it was showing that just your average Joe Blow can become a paranormal investigator. It doesn't take much. And I am going to be doing an upcoming episode showing you my equipment and talking about some of the things that I have experienced as a paranormal investigator. But let's move on. So, um, also Ghost Adventures has a ton of spinoff shows that are annoying. Um, <laughs> it's, I, it's just, they're, I think they're just laying it on way too thick. It needs to stop and just be Ghost Adventures. Okay. Stop with the spinoffs, please. Um, you can watch on Discovery Plus not only every episode of Ghost Adventures and the spinoffs, but now Zach has joined forces with Eli Roth, and every Saturday they do a uh, show about an item that is in Zach's museum, the history of that item, how he got to that item, um, but they create their own story spin on it. So there's actors and actresses reenacting different things. There's, um, the first episode is Dollhouse of the Damned, which is very creepy. It is extremely slow. Well, actually, all of these shows are slow. Um, they were really boring to me. Um, just really not digging it, to be quite honest. Uh, Monster in the Machine, Chair of the Beast, and Helter Skelter Station. And those... Uh, are the four that are out currently. There may be another one out. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you're interested, give them a go. But I wasn't all that impressed with it at all. Um, Zach just needs to stick to ghost adventures and being a paranormal investigator, period. Um, I think he's just trying to do too much. And it's just not all that good. Everything else to me is just not all that good. Just the regular episodes, please, and be done with it. All right. I think that's going to wrap up this video for today. What are your opinions on Ghost Adventures? Um, oh, one last thing that I want to say before I end the video is that when Ghost Adventures came out, there wasn't a, any kind of show that was about paranormal investigating. Um... And Ghost Adventures came out, and it was like people that were already paranormal investigators and had been doing it were thought of as weirdos. Um, but Ghost Adventures came out, and it made us look cool. You know, it made people suddenly very interested in it, and it just exploded after that. And now, it is an extreme popular thing. There's, like I said, anybody can be a paranormal investigator. It doesn't take much. But I will do another episode about that. But Ghost Adventures was an inspiration for a lot of other paranormal shows 
to come out and and be made um, and it inspired writers and things like that to do movies about it and things like that so I do want to thank um, Travel Channel and Ghost Adventures and Nick Groff actually uh, for starting Ghost Adventures yes it originally was Nick Groff's show but Zach took it over that's all I'm going to say about that so if you've never seen an episode of Ghost Adventures, just give it a check out. Watch one of the five that I've mentioned. Watch the Bobby Mackey episode and you will be hooked. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope all of you are having a safe and spooktacular October. I know that I am. We are at the bottom, folks. We are at the bottom of October. I can't believe it. October is almost gone, you guys. Wow. Um, so just remember, stay spooky, my friends.